This is in no way my attempt to justify my comic book obsession. And this story, I really, really like. Artwork, the storytelling. Wow. And I say that for two reasons. One, flashy new intro. Yay! And two, this. Superior Spider-Man number one. I knew that this was going to be a very in-demand issue, but Marvel sold out 10 days before Wednesday's release. There's a comic book shop near me just outside of Cleveland that sold out of their 280 issues by 6 p.m. on Wednesday. So if you still wanted to pick up the issue on the secondary market, that means at a comic book shop of sorts, you might want to hurry. Having said that, Spoilers! Now the first thing you'll notice by reading Superior Spider-Man is that the tone is much different than Amazing Spider-Man. The ending to Amazing Spider-Man 700 was largely unexpected, but in comics, that's good to be unexpected. This new Spider-Man is aggressive. He's very angry that there's a group going around calling themselves the Sinister Six. Now if you're a comic book nerd like me, you know that way back in 1964, in Amazing Spider-Man Annual number one, Dr. Ock had been beaten by Spider-Man three times. So he came to the conclusion that the best way to beat Spider-Man was to enlist Spider-Man's other enemies and attack him all as a team. The original six included Vulture, Electro, Kraven the Hunter, Mysterio, Sandman, and Doc Ock. So knowing this while reading Superior Spider-Man number one, you can understand why Doc Ock is a little upset that there are a bunch of D-list baddies going around sullying the name of the Sinister Six. Also, he wasn't included, so I'm sure that had something to do with it. It's like, come on, guys, I started this club. What are you doing? But just how the story escalated? Wow, it got really intense really fast, and it was not boring at all. I had no idea what to expect, but it was a pretty fun ride. You have no idea how this Spider-Man is going to react to certain things. It's like, but with Doc Ock's mind and this powerful new body, he definitely lets his ego get in the way sometimes. And with Otto trying to be Peter Parker, he's definitely saying some things that the old Peter Parker would not have said. Like his boss, Max, at Horizon Labs, he was a complete jerk. And while fighting this low-level Sinister Six, his jokey one-liners turn into very sharp verbal kidney shots. But to be honest, it was really interesting to me and kind of refreshing. But it was also kind of mad because we missed the snarky, sarcastic Peter Parker, but Otto is just kind of getting used to his bearings. He doesn't really get the whole I'm Peter Parker now thing yet. Like that part where he was upset that Peter Parker was going to get all the credit for things that he was going to do from now on. He's not Peter Parker. Well, he is Peter Parker. He's just He's not Peter, he, he's just, he's changed. Peter Parker has changed. But some of the characters, Mary Jane included, don't seem to notice Peter's drastic overnight change and that kind of irks me. Seriously, every time he has a conversation with a girl, it makes me want to gag. And I really want to see what Mary Jane is going to think of this new Peter Parker if she's going to understand that he's different somehow, or if she's just gonna go along with it like an idiot. But at least the villains understand how violent he's become. And instead of Spider-Man making his quick quips, it's the D-list villains who are kind of like the comic relief here. This Spider-Man wasn't wasting any time in beating them. He's all, ain't no spider got time for that. And the planning, oh my gosh, the amount of planning and foresight he put into fighting and beating the Sinister Six and bringing in the news crews. You can't read this and think, oh, Otto is such an idiot. No, Otto is brilliant. And I, for one, am very excited to see what kind of spider tech he comes up with. It's a different angle than most comics, having a science-minded villain in the hero's body. Of course he doesn't do things that Peter would have done, but he's also looking at things from a completely different perspective. He's even able to think about his old Dr. Octopus self and think, oh, that's what I should have done differently. A lot of people are convinced that Peter Parker is going to come back very soon, but I don't know. I think this is ambitious and well-written enough to endure for a little while. But what about that reveal at the end of the issue? Do you think they should have waited a very long time before releasing that little tidbit of information? Letting the readers know that a certain someone is still lingering around, or what? We'll have to see where it goes. One thing's for sure, this isn't your dad, Spider-Man. Special thanks to Justin for my awesome new intro. You can find his link down below. And thanks to everybody who submitted it an intro for the pull list. They were all flashy and well made and so much work was put into them. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for being so involved. That's it for this episode of the pull list. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Facebook and Twitter for more updated comic booky things. My name is Travis and thank you for helping me fuel my comic book obsession. Bye bye